Let's jump in this thing really fast. Go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, man, this, this is probably one of my favorite scriptures of blessings, prosperity. Isaiah 54, really fast. Isaiah 54, let's read it verse 2. And for the ones that take notes, how many take notes? I encourage you guys, man, you don't take notes yet, take some notes. Uh, the reason why we're going to say a lot of things in the next 20, 30 minutes, you're not going to be able to get it all. You're going to retain maybe 3% of it if you don't take notes. So try to come with a, and, and use your smartphones, man. Just put it on vibrate. That way it's not ringing all service long. But use your phone, use your tablet. Here's the title for tonight. The warfare right before the breakthrough. Anybody experiencing just a tad of warfare in their lives right now? Except Christian, he just got a house at 24. No. <laughs> but it, it's a reality. Right before a major breakthrough, it seems like warfare comes out of nowhere. Or it seems like it comes heavy. Isaiah 54, 2 and 3, it says, enlarge your house. Build an addition. Spread out your home. Spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Tell the person behind you, I'm about to explode. You just don't know it yet. Yeah, but I got this problem and I got that problem. It doesn't matter. We, we don't look at what we can see physically. We, we see what the Word of God says. You might be going through a hard time tonight. You're going through a difficult time. But I got some good news. It enlarge your house you're about to burst out of the seams your descendants will occupy the nations and resettle the ruined cities anybody read the Sun newspaper in here four days ago front page of the Sun newspaper San Bernardino is on her way out of bankruptcy give God a big shout of praise we started a exit plan we started a exit plan. I got some good news. I don't know what you're going through, but you got an exit plan working right now. You're about to step in up to your year of no limitations. God is never limited. Who limits God? Me and you limit God. Our minds limit God. Our neighborhood limits God. Our, our family limits God, but God is a God of no limitations. That means if you have a marriage that needs restoration, I got good news. We serve a God of restoration. If you're struggling tonight with alcohol, cigarettes, or drugs, I have good news. Jesus Christ has come to set the captives free. How many in this room, by a show of hands, like six years ago, you were addicted to drugs? Raise your hand. Keep your hand up for a second. Just beat the devil up for five, three, four seconds. Look around, look around. You're struggling with drugs, look around. You're struggling with alcohol, look around. We serve a God of miracles. We serve a God of breakthroughs. Give God a big shout of praise. But I wouldn't be fair to tell you before breakthroughs come some warfare. Definition of warfare is this. Write this down if you take notes. Write this down. Here's a definition of warfare. Military operations between enemies. It means hostilities. It means war. Second definition is this. An activity undertaken by an enemy to weaken or destroy another. We are fighting a real enemy. We're fighting an enemy that hates our guts. We have an enemy that wants to destroy our families. He wants an enemy to make sure that we don't prosper and buy a home. We have an enemy that's after our finances. We have an enemy and his name is the devil. His name is Lucifer. We're fighting a real war. People ask me all the time, how's the new building going? All my friends and family. And I'm always positive, it's going great. And I say this, it's going great but we're experiencing some new challenges we've never faced before. Because every time you go to a next level, you have to fight just a bigger demon sometimes. Sometimes we're trying to take over territory, but we have to understand every time we try to take over territory, there are demons or there's an enemy there trying to fight us. And that fight is called 
warfare. Someone say warfare. Look at your neighbor and tell them the warfare is real. How many agree with me warfare is real? It's a guarantee. Right before the breakthrough comes heavy warfare. Now, I, I like football, for example. Any Cowboy fans out there? First place round. Any Cowboy fans? Yeah. They're, pre they're pretty bad stuff. Right? What are they, what, 11 and 1 right now? Oh, 11 and 2. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. The Raider fans were like this. No, 11 and 2. I seen the Raider. Where are the Raider fans at? What, 10 and 3? What are you guys now? 10 and 4? 10 and 3? 10 and 3. What's your guys' record? Oh, no one knows? No Raider fans know the record? I love football because it gives us a good example. Mike Kell, put up some pictures of some linemen up there real quick. Now, I don't know what team he chose, so if it's not your team, you can yell at Kubi after service. Can you put up some linemen? Right before you're going to cross over to get a touchdown, right before you're about to get a major breakthrough, it's like the enemy sends like six foot five, 350 pound demons your way. <laughs> How many of you ever played football and get hit by a 300 pound person? That's why I never played football. Here's some facts about linemen. The average guard, the average tackle, the center in the NFL 2015, the average lineman, six foot five, 312 pounds. That's a big cat, Devo, Pastor Devo. I don't want to get hit by a 300-pound guy. I looked it up. I said, who was the biggest guy in the NFL, one of the biggest cats? His name was Aaron Gibson. How many know Aaron Gibson? You remember Aaron Gibson? You have a picture of that dude? Aaron Gibson, he, he, he lined up at six foot seven, 440 pounds. One of the biggest guys to ever step foot on a football field. Six foot seven, four. He weighed 430 his senior year in high school. <laughs> what did mama feed that boy? But this is what happens. Right before our major breakthrough, the enemy tries to set up a man, lineman, that tries to stop us. And that line, that fight, that battle that we're facing is called warfare. Some will say warfare. So before the breakthrough, what comes first? Before the breakthrough, what comes first? So should we be surprised of warfare? Look at 1 Peter. Is it 1 Peter? Let me see. 1 Peter. Uh, let me see. I get ahead of myself. I'm going so fast. We got so much notes. I don't want to mess it up. Let me see. Is it 1 Peter? Yeah, 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, no, no, forget about that. Go back, go back. Let me give you a few things really fast. I'll go back to that scripture. I'm going two ahead. Let me go real fast. Write down this. What is God trying to produce in the middle of warfare? I want to cover that. I got so much stuff, we don't have time to cover everything. Let me answer that for the next few minutes. What is God trying to produce in the middle of warfare? Number one, warfare produces a greater capacity in you. Say that again. Oh, you guys are saying it. Oh my gosh, you're like on it. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys are like. What is God trying to produce? He's trying to produce a greater capacity in you. Here's a fact. Write this down. It's a good fact. Your current, your current capacity can't handle the future outpouring that God wants to give you. Write that down. Current capacity can't handle the future outpouring that God wants to give you. Look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 17 really quick. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. Are we going too fast? Are the notes going too fast? Man, they're like in it, Michael. Go back. Let them write it down, man. This is cool. Write it. Go back. Go back. What are you writing down? Your current? All right, there it goes. Your current capacity can't handle. You might be asking, why am I going through this warfare? Because he's trying to expand your capacity. See, an eight ounce cup could only handle eight ounce of water. 32 ounce could it, could 
has a little capacity a little bit more. 62 ounce capacity. Some of us, we want the miracle, we want the breakthrough, but God is saying, I have to expand your capacity. I heard people say all the time, I want just to win the lottery and get a million dollars. And God is saying, I can't give that person a million dollars. They don't have the capacity to manage it properly. The first thing they'll do, they'll go buy a house for 800000 which leaves them 200000 Then they go buy a Lamborghini for two hundred fifty, and now they're in debt 50000 <laughs> Some of you guys will get that on the way home. Because our capacity can't handle it. Look at Matthew chapter 9. Everybody got it down? Everybody got it? All right. Matthew chapter, what did I say? My, Matthew chapter 9? Matthew 9. Look at Matthew 9, 17. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Can't do it. Why? For the old skins, this is Matthew 9, 17. For the old skins would burst from the pressure. Capacity. If you're taking notes, put there by pressure. Capacity. God can't give us more because he's trying to build capacity. Because if you put new wine in old wine skin, the pressure's going to hit, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wine skins so that both are preserved. So look at your neighbor and tell them, God is building capacity in me. Why? So you could handle more. So you could handle more responsibility. This church right now, we haven't launched into the next city yet. Why haven't we launched into Pomona yet? Why haven't we launched into Stockton yet? Why haven't we launched in Detroit yet? Why haven't we launched into Chicago? Because you and I, God is still working on capacity. So when we get to Pomona, we can handle Pomona and San Bernardino. But if we can't handle San Bernardino, we can't handle two cities. So we got to make sure we handle one properly. When we handle one city properly and manage and become good stewards, then God will release Pomona, Detroit, and Chicago. Give God a big shout of praise. He's trying to build capacity. So one of the reasons why we have warfare, he's trying to build capacity. Here's number two. Let me give you a couple more. This one hurts. I don't like this one. Warfare produces purification. Yeah, this is a hard one. I know. It's hard. Warfare produces purification. We want the breakthrough, and it's good. It's going to happen. It's right around the corner. But there's still some things God is trying to purify out of your lives. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. 1 Peter 1, 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith is far more, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. See, fire is the refining process to get to the gold. Let's say that again. Fire is the refining process to get to the gold. Right before the breakthrough, warfare hits. What was number one? Why do we go through warfare? Let me see who's taking notes. Now what's number two? We have to get purified. Our thoughts need to get purified. Right now, we're in warfare and we're about to get a breakthrough, and God is saying the breakthrough's right around the corner. Your house keys are right around the corner. Your job is right around the corner, or that, or, or that degree is right, it's right around the corner. He keeps on telling me, Pomona is right around the corner. Chicago is right around the corner. But he's still purifying us. When does purifying even stop? It never stops. Every day I say, God, purify me. Lord, fix my thoughts, how I act. And I was, here, I was here Sunday, and I had a big awakening moment, man. God just like, 
You ever been in church and God just like, it's like the conviction, you just feel it? Not like a punch, that's not a good example, or just conviction. The, the man of God was talking about honor. How many were here last Sunday night about honor? You didn't get it, get on the webcast, you got to get that thing. And you got to honor people. My, my, my mind rewinded like, I don't know, 15 years ago, 18 years ago. I was watching TV, and I was watching Benny Hinn. And he was in a particular service where he just took off his jacket. And he's with a big crowd. And he goes like this. And everybody fell in the spirit. People getting healed. I was living with Pastor Marco at the time. He comes into the room. He's, what are you watching? I said, I'm watching this guy. I can't stand this guy. <laughs> Pastor Marco said, come again? What would you just say? You don't talk about men of God. You don't know him. Why are you talking about him like that? I said, well, the way he's flashing his coat, man, he's all flashy. Pastor Marco said, be very careful of the people you're downgraded because one day you might need his healing miracle hand on you. So sure enough, man, you know what God was dealing with me during that time? He was purifying me. So years fast forward, you guys know my story. I got really sick. Guess who I watched every night till 3 in the morning? I was in the house. Somebody wave a coat at me. I seen Benny Hinn do that. <laughs> then, then to top it off, I didn't know that one of my strong gifts would be the gifts of healing. It's one of my strong gifts, evangelism, teaching, and the gift of healing. The very thing that I was down in because the enemy knew that. Enemy could, oh, can enemy see the future? Well, he, he can see a life where it's headed, man. He, can, he knows, the enemy knows the word of God. He knows where a person is starting to head. He knows what's about to happen. He sees, he, he knows the word of God. But during that time of my life, God was purifying me. So sometimes we want that breakthrough, and it is coming. I have good news. The house keys are coming. The house keys are on the way. But he has to build a little more capacity. He has to purify just a little more to get ready to hold what God wants for you. Let me give you a couple more. Three and four. Let me give you a couple more really fast for the sake of time. Let me see. Number three. Where's number three at? Number three. Warfare produces great faith. Just jot these things down. Warfare produces great faith. We see that there in the scripture, 1 Peter 1, 7. Number four. Warfare produces solid integrity. Warfare produces great faith. Warfare produces solid integrity. Warfare produces long-lasting character. We're in warfare right now. We're about to see the miracle. He's still developing character. He's still developing integrity. Warfare builds endurance. Here's the last one. Warfare solidifies your foundation. Warfare solidifies what? Warfare solidifies your foundation. He's making you stronger. Depending on how the foundation is, how high you could build up. The foundation has to be strong. Now the last thing and we're done. I want you to write this down really fast. During the warfare, what do we do during the warfare? Really quick. What do we do during the warfare? You guys got the answers. You guys are great. Let's all go home. You guys already got it. You guys are so awesome. You're right. Prayer, worship. Here's what I wrote down. Yours is right too. It's even better than mine. Here's number one. How do you get through the warfare? How do you get through it? Number one, you got to get the right perspective about what you're going through. Get the right perspective. James 1, 2, and 3. Dear brothers, when troubles come, consider the great opportunity for great joy. When your faith is tested, endurance has a chance to grow. What's going to get you through the warfare? Number two, having the right focus. Right perspective and the right focus. We don't focus on our problems. 
We don't focus on a six foot seven giant. We fix our eyes on the champ and the champ's name is Jesus Christ. My eyes are not on that lineman. My eyes are not on the six foot seven giant. I fix my eyes on Jesus. I fix my eyes on the word. That's Hebrews 12 too. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects your faith. That's Hebrews 12 too. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, not the lineman in front of you, not the giant in front of you, not the problem. We look at Jesus, our champion. And number three, how do you get through the warfare? Here's number three, the right words. The right what? Words. Enemies after all words. We must be very careful what we're saying in the middle of warfare. Our words have a lot of creative power attached to it. Proverbs 18, 18, 21, the tongue can bring death or life, but those who love to talk will reap the consequences. You're in warfare right now. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Get the right perspective. Count it all joy. What's the perspective? He's building capacity. He's He's building endurance. He's, he's building faith. And the last thing, if we're going to get through warfare, we got to watch every word that comes out of our mouth. If you're about to say something negative, like back in the days, just shut it up. Because your words have a lot of creative power. Speaking defeat, speaking about that family, speaking about this family, gossiping about that person, gossiping about this person, and you're in the middle of warfare, and the devil's saying, yeah, I got him. I got him. He's saying all the wrong stuff. Or they're, they're speaking doubt. They're not speaking the word. They're not worshiping. They're not praying. Watch your mouth. We got to watch every word that we say. Right now, this church, we're experiencing some growth, but we're also in a point of warfare. We're facing things we've never faced before. The church has grown, and it's grown a little bit. It's grown, it's grown here and there, and, but there's still some areas that we have to fine-tune, and I, and I can see what the Holy Spirit is trying to do. And the minute we get frustrated, the minute we start talking negative, is the minute we stay in that warfare longer. I don't want to stay in that warfare long. I want to get my keys for my house. <laughs> we'll just use your example all night long, man. Let's give Jesus a big shout of praise if you love God. Tell the person next to you, I'm getting through the warfare. Tell the person behind you, I'm getting through the warfare. Because I know there's warfare right before the breakthrough. Don't be surprised about a, a, a trial or something that hits you. Say, Lord, here's a trial. But I know, Lord, I'm right around the corner of my breakthrough. Let's all stand and let's give God a round of applause or give your neighbor a high five, whatever you want to do. You want to shout, you want to shout.